We are going to talk about methadone this afternoon, and uh, we are going to talk about recent research done on methadone. And our guest today is Professor Jörg Merland, who is head of the Division of Forensic Toxicology and Drug Abuse at the Norwegian Institute of Public Health. Welcome to WFAD, Professor Merland. Thank you very much. Um, in the abstract of the research that you've done, it is said that behavioral consequences of long-term methadone treatment have received little attention, either in humans or experimental animals. And in the work that you've done now, you show that methadone administered once daily for three weeks with repeated withdrawal on Saturday and Sundays impairs the novelty preference in rats. We are talking about rats now. Could you elaborate on that? And also, are there any conclusions or further research that we could um, be enlightened on when it comes to how this could influence research and consequences for human use of methadone? Okay, I will try, and I guess you will give me some assistance if I should miss important points. But okay. uh, the first thing is that we, um, of course, you can ask why do you use uh, animals in a study which has the uh, goal, more or less, to be of some usefulness for, for humans. But I think it's important then to, to realize that uh, it is hard to do uh, studies uh, on uh, uh, healthy humans, drug-naive people, putting them on methadone, in this case, for weeks uh, after weeks, and see what happens with their uh, cognitive uh, function. So, as is very often done in, uh, in medical research, we have started with animals. And the point that we did that was also that uh, we had very little knowledge about the long-term effects of methadone. Methadone was introduced as a drug many, many years ago, and uh, it was introduced at a time when the so-called preclinical studies were not so uh, common. That is to say that one didn't test the drugs very thoroughly in animals before they were used in humans at that time. And also, to begin with, methadone was not intended for long-term use. It was intended for short-term use, and therefore maybe one thought that, well, long-term studies in animals are not that necessary. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we did the study because of, of lack of information, and also since some human studies might indicate that being on methadone uh, might give you some cognitive impairment, and, uh, for instance, as a part of methadone uh, treatment in uh, relation to rehabilitation after previous heroin use. And if this cognitive impairment is there, it could be important to realize that and to do, see what can be done with it because uh, cognitive impairment is by itself a impairing uh, phenomenon, an impairing factor with respect to to gain full recovery after previous uh, drug use. Mm -hmm. So we did the study, uh, as was uh, cited, rats were put on methadone daily for three weeks uh, with some interruptions during the weekends. And the dose we gave, that's also important, uh, was, I think, comparable to the dose which is given to humans. It, the dose is, in fact, higher if you consider the dose per kilogram rat. But on the other hand, the rat is a more rapid metabolizer of methadone than humans are. So in fact, the rats had higher concentrations than humans for part of the days. But for other parts of the days, before the next dose was given, the concentrations was down to zero. So we consider this to be comparable. Of course, that can be discussed. Mm -hmm. And what we find then after three weeks, three weeks of treatment is that if you test the animals under methadone influence, methadone being present in their brains, they are very sluggish, they don't uh, do too much activities, their novelty is reduced as well as are a lot of other cerebral functions. 
But if we test them again, then one day after the last dose, without any new methadone being given, they behave quite normally. They uh, uh, move around as, as control animals. They are uh, doing the same things uh, as we have tested at least, more or less the same, with one exception. And the exception is that their interest in new objects is markedly reduced compared to the control group. Mm -hmm. So that's what we have. We, we use this so-called novelty test as a measure of cognitive function because uh, the rat is an animal where cognition is very much linked to the um, interest in new object, objects, I guess from history, because that is very important to the animal either to get the, hold of food, water, to get away from fears, and so on. Mm -hmm. Now, have you, have you, um, you mentioned studies have been made, but if I understand you correctly, there has been no studies made about cognitive impairment on human beings. No, not in a controlled fashion. That's right. No. Uh, no. What we see is uh, from epidemiological studies on people involved in methadone treatment programs, you can see that they have been tested uh, with respect to some cognitive functions. But the problem is then, uh, what is actually the function of methadone? Or what is the consequence of the previous heroin intake, drug abuse, uh, whatsoever? Mm. So there are problems with, with the uh, human studies so far. Mm. So what will be the future now of the research? You've started doing this, so what are the plans for the future? Is there something you can reveal, or will that be scientific secrets? Yes, that's, uh, well, we can reveal the secrets, uh, not so secret. <laughs> <laughs> but I think what we have found now is more or less the first point. We were looking for are there effects or not, and we have found an effect. And the next question is then, I think there are two important questions. One is, how long will this uh, effect prevail? We have just tested for one day after the last dose. And the next question is, or maybe a parallel question is, uh, what is the mechanism behind this uh, effect? Mm. And with respect to the last question, we have two studies already ongoing. One is looking for, are there specific proteins in the brain cells which are inhibited or altered by the previous methadone treatment. And the other line of research we are doing right now, together with a group in the United States, is to find out could this have something to do with the neogenesis of brain cells, because some brain cells, they are, in, they are possible to be replaced during life. We thought 10 years ago, maybe, that uh, brain cells, they could not be replaced, but now we know more about this, and some, some types of brain cells then can be renewed later in life, and uh, uh, from the effects we see with, with respect to lack of interest for novel objects, uh, this is a possible, a possible consequence of effects uh, in a part of the brain which is called hippocampus, Mm -hmm. And hippocampus is the part of the brain where we have this continuous, renewed synthesis of brain cells uh, throughout life, and we wonder whether methadone can influence this process. Mm -hmm. Now, if we look at the time span from doing research, in this case on rats, to doing research and maybe find some conclusive evidence on human beings, what time span are we talking about, do you think? You should always be very careful when you try to do uh, transformation from animal studies to, to human studies, and it's very hard to do so, but now and then you see people working with rats, which has a, which is an animal which has a total lifespan of about, uh, of about the two years. We are talking about the treatment here for three weeks, uh, maybe we should multiply with a factor of, well, what should I say, 30, 40, something like that. Mm. So maybe we are talking about here methadone treatment for not three weeks, but maybe uh, a couple of years, mm. which is not uncommon, I mean, in the, in the field of methadone treatment. 
but there are other possible uh, dangers uh, also which we can uh, have to keep in mind when you are going from one animal to another like the human because uh, there could be important differences which make such uh, transformation of results from one species to another a bit uh, too scary but of course human biology has a lot of resemblance also with animal biology so there's always things you can discuss either pro or country mm. because now nowadays i mean there is quite a lot of of uh, interest in pushing for increased use of methadone as a treatment method as part of the so-called harm reduction activities so uh, i think that many people might be interested in in uh, uh, further research related to this because if as i see it if this means that the um there could be a cognitive impairment then of course people might have to be a bit more careful when prescribing especially mass prescription of methadone would that be a correct thing or yes i i think that is one line of thinking which is uh, absolutely a line which should be pursued uh, we cannot say on basis of this research that one should be more careful with the methadone prescription to humans, but mm. it might indicate that we should uh, try to gain more information about this and actually to do studies both in more studies in animals and also more studies in humans. Would it be possible to do studies, as you see it, would it be scientifically correct to do studies on patients who are presently on methadone, would that be a feasible way of moving this research forward? Or you can you can think of many models, in fact, on on people uh, on methadone, and I think uh, a group which actually could be very interesting to follow is those who have been on heroin or drug abuse for let's say five, ten years. Then they go into a methadone treatment program. They get rid of their drug habits they are just on methadone, then they can be tested during this uh, treatment period. And then if some of these people actually decides to leave methadone as well and stay drug-free after that, it could be very, follow, very interesting to follow their cognitive function during the years to come mm -hmm. to see whether there is an improvement, whether they stay at the same level, uh, whether they get worse, you don't know. But I think that is a study, type of study, which I think hasn't been done so far, but which can be easily done without any ethical problems, in fact. Mm. Well, I suppose that we will have a good reason to get back to you uh, when your research advances. But we thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us today about the present research on methadone going on at the Division of Forensic Toxicology and Drug Abuse at the Norwegian Institute of Public Health. Thank you very much.